a lot of different things in this section. We started off by talking about Enlightenment philosophers, people from different locations, different countries, who had different philosophies on how governments should work, on how the world should work, how societies should exist. Some of those individuals that we talked about were Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes. He was from England. England. We talked about Baron de Montesquieu, who was from? England. No, France. 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 Um, we also talked about a couple of other people. Um, we talked about John Locke. We Rousseau. talked about Rousseau, um, Mary Wollstonecraft briefly, um, and a few others. Ultimately, from those individuals and their beliefs, there are a couple that I really want to point out that are important. Well, they're all important. More important. Hobbes. Hobbes' idea of a social contract. We talked about this. We had modern examples of contracts. In a contract, there are two parties. Two, parties. two or more. What does, or who were Hobbes's two parties? The government and the citizens. One was the government and one was society. Ultimately, what did Hobbes say that society had to give up for the government? Freedoms. Freedoms. In return... Hobbes said that the government would provide what? Stability. Law, order, stability, um, peace. Et peace. What did he say if this didn't happen, if the people were not willing to give up their freedoms? Anarchy. Then, well, no, you're thinking of Locke, I believe. If the people are not willing to give up their freedoms, then... Can the government do their job? No. No. Hobbes said that this must happen. What type of government was Hobbes a proponent of? Socialism. An absolute, absolute monarchy. monarchy. He said that you have to have one absolute power because people are naturally greedy. And greedy. selfish and greedy. Wait, I think it's socialism. It's kind of like socialism. Yeah, like just that idea, I guess. Because you give them freedoms and it would be more like communism. It still has a social contract kind of in it. More of a ending, not really contract. Never mind. Um, let's talk about Montesquieu. Montesquieu, we said, was from France. France. Montesquieu and the French background had really seen that there was inequality. There are problems when you have an absolute monarch like Louis um, the Fourteenth, etc. Montesquieu had a different belief. He did not believe an absolute monarch was the way to go. Montesquieu believed in what? A division of powers. A division or balance of powers. He believed that you needed to divide powers in order to avoid what? One becoming too crazy. One Taking person becoming over. too crazy or abusing their power. So he believed that you had to basically have branches of your government that check and balance one another. Who does Montesquieu inspire or encourage or influence? America. America. The founding fathers as they decide how our government will function. Okay. Oh, let's go into some countries here. We'll start off with uh, the Spanish Armada. Spain. Spain has colonized where? Mexico, about it earlier. The Caribbean. The Aztec Empire. And what did they find there? What resource really spurred gold. their colonization? Gold. And ultimately, what are they doing with the gold? What's that? Using it. Using it. They're taking it back to Spain. The problem is, as they're taking it back to Spain, you have some sea dogs, dogs. that are ultimately coming from England and attacking those Spanish treasure ships. This leads to some tensions, as do religious tensions, with the fact that Queen Elizabeth is what religion? Protestant. Protestant, encouraging a very Protestant England, whereas Spain is a part of the Holy Roman Empire, Catholic. very much Roman Catholic. The Spanish complete an armada, which is a group of what? Ships. 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 Unsinkable ships that they send to attack the English. Their goal is a land invasion. They meet instead where? In the? Channel. English Channel. And ultimately, the English defeat the Spanish Armada. The Armada is left in ruins, 
And um, will England ever become Roman Catholic again? No. No. Whereas outside of Spain, in France, you also have religious conflict, religious issues going on there as well. Do you remember the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre? Yeah. Yep. It was very interesting because you have a princess, a Catholic princess, marrying a Protestant, Protestant. Protestant or Huguenot, as Protestants were called in France. Um, and ultimately, her mother, the queen, who is Catholic, tries to do what? Kill, kill everybody. a lot. Kill a mass amount of Huguenots on their wedding day, which happens to be St. Bartholomew's Day. What comes from this is a further division in France between Catholic and Protestant. You will see that man intertwined in this marriage, Henry of Navarre, mm -hmm. become King Henry IV. He will have to recant his religion, basically, to become king. But then what does he go on to do? For the religious He gives them some religious freedom, some religious rights, and because of that he is... Well liked. Well liked, but assassinated. Yeah. Ultimately, the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre shows that it wasn't just Spanish and the English who were having religious conflicts. It is still going on from the Renaissance and Reformation, that battle between Protestantism and Catholicism and Christianity in general, branching out in different divisions. Okay. Last thing up here, the English Civil War. What sparks the English Civil War? What are the English upset with? The stamp The monarchy. Monarchy. You have an absolute monarch telling parliament, which is supposed to give people a voice, that they can't meet, that they can't have a say in things. And like you'll see in other countries, the English basically step up and say, no, we can have a say, we will have a say, or we will fight for it to the death. With the English Civil War, you have two sides. Who are they? Royalists and Roundheads. Royalists and Roundheads. Who is the leader of the Roundheads? Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell. Who wins, the Royalists or the Roundheads? The Roundheads. The Roundheads. Well, technically the Roundheads, but what happens after Oliver Cromwell becomes Lord Protector? He, he fails, gets and then they need to bring back his... He not only fails... But he also goes on to become what kind of leader? An absolute, an absolute monarch. Basically, minus the monarch title, he becomes an absolute ruler. This leads to problems because the people just fought to get rid of an absolute ruler. So we see monarchy come back into play. And the end-all answer here, what happens in the end to restore the faith in the government? What do the people bring in? Commonwealth. Constitutional a, commonwealth, a constitutional monarchy. With the restoration, they basically put into power two leaders. Is that what the glorious revolution? Mm -hmm. They basically put into power two leaders that they picked, and they place restrictions upon their power, restrictions that will remain. Questions about absolutism and enlightenment?